Hi, this is Del with Healing Frequencies Music, and I have a rather fascinating vlog for you this evening or video, which will be matched up with the blog post, which I will put it in the uh, description below, along with all the links that I used to make this video. This is titled The Frequency of Propaganda. And you're thinking, huh? <laughs> As I have stated so many times throughout the uh, YouTube channel, everything has a resonant frequency. That includes all of our thoughts, all of our actions, all of our words, ideas and everything, all of the things that we see in society come out of a thought pattern, which breeds itself some juicy intent that's followed up with some form of an action, whether it's a word or whatever it is. All of that requires and involves some form of resonant frequency. So without further ado, I have to share screen first because I don't have two screens and I don't already have the PowerPoint presentation open. So we shall go through the share screen process real quick. And we will start the thing from the beginning. It does say from the beginning. There we go. So it's called the frequency of propaganda. We'll learn about that. So how is propaganda a frequency? Well, first of all, let me move my little picture because now you're not going to see. Everything has energy and energy is a frequency. So every thought, every intention, every word carries a resonating frequency, which I said earlier, but I cannot stress that enough. The next thing is, is we live out of the results of what we think, we frame in our mind, and then support with some form of an action. So thinking relates to thoughts. Framing is, is related, related to an intention. And then the action is the words or acting something out by physically doing something. Because we can do things without actually saying something that is the action to our framed intent. Because propaganda involves control, its results have a negative frequency impact. Now, there are probably a few situations where propaganda isn't negative, but we'll get deeper into that as we go. So propaganda carries a negative frequency because its root intention is coercion. The purpose of propaganda is, is to get you to believe a certain way, to buy a certain thing, to do some sort of an action. So we move further. So here's some things as a reminder. One, thoughts, intents, and actions all have a resonant frequency that control our past, our present, and our future. We are living out what we spoke and did over ourselves all the way from childhood until we reverse the pattern. We reverse the patterns by practicing something that is the opposite to rid ourselves of what we're living out. And that takes time. And I go over that in several other blog posts I'm not gonna do here. We can choose our responses to life situations even in the midst of chaos. Now, a lot of people would disagree with me on that, but. As I always say, I'm not telling you something I haven't already practiced and done myself. Been there, done that, bought the t-shirt and wore it in all chaotic situations. Some I miserably failed and some I passed with flying colors. So I know that I can choose my response to life situations. Fear is a destiny killer. Anytime something points us to fear, it's going to stop you dead in your tracks and keep any forward motion from occurring. Keep that in mind. What we focus on becomes our leader through life, whether that's a person, it's an action, 
it's an ideal if we put something before our face and we stare at that puppy long enough it's going to become what leads us through life okay until we change stinking thinking we're going to continue to live from a negative position if we don't want to live out of negativity then get rid of the stinking thinking <laughs> don't live out of fear anxiety frustration anger all of those things lead to negative thinking or stinking thinking which then we respond with the appropriate action or oftentimes words if we see the glasses half empty we are more susceptible to the evils of propaganda don't need to say a whole lot more about that and the last thing as we choose to see through a lens of unconditional love we are less susceptible to be swayed by negative propaganda what i mean by that is where's your focus what are you looking at what are we what are you meditating on what is the very thing that is before your face before your eyes before your ears before your thought life that is making all the cogs and wheels in your life spin enough that you are going to respond out of what's before you if it's unconditional love because love, love is the highest or i wouldn't say highest i'm saying the strongest frequency that we can resonate from that will definitely keep us from being persuaded by negative propaganda. So I, of course, I had to look up some definitions. So dictionary.com says that propaganda is information, ideas, or rumors that are deliberately spread widely to help or harm a person, group, movement, institution, nation, blah, 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 blah. And it's the deliberate spreading of such information, rumors, or et cetera, or excuse me, rumors, et cetera, and or the particular doctrines or principles propagated by an organization or movement. So take a moment to let that soak in. Then Merriam Webster continues by clarifying that propaganda includes ideas, facts, or allegations spread deliberately to further one's cause or to damage an opposing cause. Now I'm going to take something that's extremely innocent. I remember the first time that I really recognized this at work around me. Every one of you have been involved in some like a sport or something that's really important to you where it requires having equipment or something to do what you're going to do. I remember in high school going to all Northwest band in that particular year, you know, and, and that involved the Northwest states plus Alaska. And I think Utah was included in that as well. I don't remember, but there were several states. They picked the top musicians out of every state to be in a band, orchestra, or choir. And I happened to make the Northwest Band. And I was, at the time I lived in the state of Montana, I was one of three clarinet players from the state of Montana that was in the All-State Band. I remember going in there and it was my first encounter with people outside of my particular sphere of clarinet influence and all these people walked in and they're like okay if you have this mouthpiece if you use these reeds if you use this ligature on your instrument if you have a particular brand of clarinet if you wear these kinds of clothes if you have blah 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 that makes you a better clarinet player and i'm sitting here looking at these people thinking what turnip truck did you guys fall off of? Because <laughs> I'm like, can you play your scales? Can you play the music that's put in front of you? To me, that's what determines whether you can play clarinet better than me or not. Not whether you have a better instrument than I do. Not whether your mouthpiece is a different mouthpiece than mine. And, you know, I mean, and I looked at that whole thing. That is an example of propaganda 
present it to someone for them to think that they were better than someone else because they had this particular thing. We see it all the time in sports. You get a certain product that makes you in the know, in, in the in crowd because you use this particular brand of item. So those are some examples of some of propaganda. Now, in that case, they are ideas, facts that were spread deliberately, but they are, you know, here they say it's a widely harm a person, but it is really a deliberate spreading of information because they have a specific result that they're looking for. In certain cases, it's to buy this brand of sports equipment. In my case, it was, if you don't have a buffet or a 13 clarinet, you are not in the cool crowd. You are not as good of a clarinet player as someone who has that particular instrument. So I'm just using those as pretty innocent versions of propaganda, but yet it's still a form of propaganda because it promotes the fact that you're better at this if you have this product. Okay, I think I pretty well hammered that definition. How does propaganda work? Propaganda is generally fear driven. Now I can add to that. It is fear driven. It is you need this to be this. So I, that really goes back to fear, because if I don't have this, then I'm not that. So that's fear. It's a belief that reality and truth of an event aren't the same. Now that might be kind of hard to understand because sometimes truth and reality are two different things, depending on how you look at it and what your belief system is. If you have a certain belief and that belief has got you in a box, unless you get out of that box, you're not gonna see any belief other than your own. So that's the reality Here's the word reality that you personally live in, but does that reality really match the truth? So indoctrination is a part of propaganda. Indoctrination happens in many ways, which we'll get into later. Publicity. How would you know to get a particular piece of sports equipment unless there wasn't something out there before your ear gates and your eye gates all the time telling you that you need this particular product? which leads us into advertising. That's how advertisers get the word out. They use publicity of various forms to do it so that you buy this, you are now in the cool crowd. Brainwashing is part of propaganda. Brainwashing is continually putting the same thing in front of you 24 seven. We have a wonderful example that I will show you when we get here soon. Doctrine. Religious groups tend, extremely religious groups, they can indoctrinate you to a place where you do some pretty goofballish things. If any of you are aware of what happened with Jim Jones and the whole Guyana thing in the, I can't remember, it was the late 1970s. If you don't know anything about that, go look it up. Jim Jones, Jim Jones Church, and then he moved his entire church down he started getting, doing weird stuff and eventually got the entire commune to self-suicide because he put so much fear in them. So, and that was through religious doctrine that he did it. Now that's an extreme example, but it's a really good example of being brainwashed and indoctrination all at the same time. News speak, that is using the news to constantly bombard you with the information that they want you to hear. All right, so it also works like this. And I've got all these different points here. For you, you shape a message through strategy and communication of that message. You regulate how the message is presented. You implant the message into your memory banks. You promote the message. There's instruction on the idea, excuse me, ideology of the message. There's an indoctrination of the message, a proclamation of the message, and there's a persuasion to act in a certain manner. And I go back to when I was in high school. You know, 
you can even now go into certain places. And I remember going and taking lessons from certain people. If you don't have this mouthpiece, if you don't have this instrument, you don't use this reed, then you're not doing it right. They shaped the message. They worked on how they communicated that message. They regulated on what was going on. They tried to, they implanted that in all their students. They promoted it in every lesson, everything that went on. There was an instruction on how you were supposed to do it. You became indoctrinated in it. They proclaimed that this is what it was going to be. And the, all of that was done through persuasion. That is how propaganda works. And again, I'm using it in my own example of my road to playing the clarinet. <laughs> and as a teacher, I completely bucked that. I'm like, sorry, that ain't going to work because the inside of my mouth isn't going to be like the inside of your mouth. So therefore, I have to choose equipment that works for you. There is no blanket way that it's done. And unfortunately, not a lot of people function that way. And that that really saddened me. OK, where do we see propaganda being played out? Through advertising. Everyone is compelled to buy the latest iPhone or electronic device. Think about it. Every time a new iPhone comes out, people are chomping at the bit because you've been told that the latest and greatest iPhone is going to have blah, 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 blah. And I always roll my eyes at that. And I'm like, why do I want to spend money on that one when I have works? OK, and I use the example of religion. If you don't believe this way, you're wrong. And extreme religious groups, that's what they do. Political systems are wonderful at using propaganda. If we take on blank ideals, we're going to have a much better society. But you have to stick to these ideals in order for the society to be better. Education. This is how you are supposed to think. Unfortunately, because I'm in the world of education, I see it before me. And I've given you examples of teachers that I've had who have said, if you don't have this equipment, then you're not doing it right. Sorry, it doesn't work that way. Now, unfortunately, too many people just went by that because they were, I don't know, <laughs> I'm not even going to go down that one. And this last one, family. Man is the boss over his family. Now, if you are in religious groups, that is definitely proposed. And I honestly think that is one of the reasons we have a breakup of family. Family is everybody participating in cooperating in the family experience. Yes, the parents together should be working in unity to bring the family unit together. And when you take and make one person ruler over everyone else, then you have just played the hand of propaganda. How do we succumb to propaganda? We want someone else to think for us. We think others are smarter than us. We do not believe in ourselves or our ability to do something because we think someone's smarter than us. Or we've been told that someone's smarter than us. We can't see a way out of a situation. When we get stuck and we keep going around the hamster wheel and then someone finally comes and offers this situation and a way to get out, we're like, phew, someone finally has an answer. We tend to see through a negative lens rather than positive. The media constantly spouts negativity over positivity. And I think it's because of adrenaline. We have become adrenaline junkies to fear because fear is what sells the news. And if they can keep us in a negative position, then we're going to be feeding off that negativity, which keeps us glued to the TV or glued to whatever it is so we can get our next adrenaline rush. We lack hope because our focus is too often on the negative. So then we look specifically political, religious and financial systems begin to fail. So we're looking for a better way. The latest and greatest church, the leader has just fallen. So we completely think our whole life has fallen before us. You know, we have a financial crash. Wall Street goes to, you know, and the political leadership of a country goes. And so we think, oh, my gosh, we fall into fear. When we fall into fear, we don't believe in ourselves. We think others are smarter than us. Then we think someone else can 
pull us off the hamster wheel, blah, blah, blah. And it's a cyclical issue that keeps going. We're in a period of turmoil and listen to those who offer a promise of hope, which is what I said about the hamster wheel. When someone promises a way to get off the wheel and pulls us off, we're like, Phew, someone help me get out of that mess. We're unwilling to step into a position where we can become part of the change because that leads us back. We think someone else is smarter than us. We don't believe in ourselves. So therefore we allow others to think for us. Or I'm going to throw this out there. We're too lazy to think for ourselves. And here's the biggest one. We'd rather complain than do. I'll leave that one right there and let it wiggle around outside the eye gates for us to think about. So I'm going to give some examples here. We look at recent history. If we do not look at history and learn from our history, we are if we don't learn from history, we are destined to repeat it. And the example I'm going to use is from World War II as run by Adolf Hitler. And if you don't know who Adolf Hitler is by now, go do some research. And how did Hitler use propaganda to implement his plans? And I specifically use a two or three. I think I have, I put two in here, but I think at the end of this, I ended up using three. And I will make sure the links to all of those are in the description below. And they're by the username Timeline World History Events. One is called Hitler's Dark Methods of Manipulation. And the other is Hitler's Psychological Warfare. Boy, those sound like tasty titles. So now we're going to look at Hitler himself. And what is it that made him popular? First off, he used theatrically staged events to project his practiced image. Think about theatrics. What is it that we in the 21st century spend a lot of our time looking at? How often do we look to movies and popular actors and actresses who are out there to act out? <laughs> what it is that we want. We project what we want through theater, through movies, through the arts. And I just, I found this very fascinating and I'll go into more detail of that eventually. And he believed that his image, how he projected himself was absolutely everything. He would not allow one picture of himself to escape his eyeballs without his approval. Thousands of pictures of him were taken and not one of them that is out there in the public went out without his approval. He believed that certain people groups caused the problems of World War I. He believed his person that he personally had the answer to Germany's problems. If you believe that you have the answer, you are going to do everything that you can to promote your idea to project the image that you are the solution and that you are going to do whatever is necessary to stage an event to make it look like you have the answers. Hitler was the king of doing this. He did not agree with the Treaty of Versailles, which was what put Germany into a box. And he believed that Germany had been wronged and wasn't a free country. And because he was nationalistic, now I don't think that nationalism is necessarily wrong, but he took the nationalism and said, Germany, you got screwed. I'm going to fix it. If you trust in me, I will fix it for you. That was basically what he did. He planted the idea that Germany was betrayed in World War I, and he passed these sentiments to the people through propaganda. So if you have a leader that says, this country sucks. This is what's happened. These people have done this to us, da, 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 da. but I am here to fix it for you because we are in such dire straits, blah, 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 that I'm going to fix it. I'm going to fix it. I'm going to fix it. Now, there are probably genuinely people who understand what's going on with the country 
and can try to fix it. But at the same point, they're not going to say, I'm the only one who can fix your country's problem. So if we have a leader that says they're the one, not, not me with the people together will fix the problem, but they are personally the answer to the problem. So I think that's the difference and we have to be very careful in looking at the motive behind that person. Hitler believed that he personally had the answer and everyone behind him had to live by his ideals. Otherwise, you're out of here, man. Okay, how did Hitler gain trust? He believed in the power of a consistent message and he used speech. There we go, speech, the frequency of his words. The resonant frequency of his words reached from his mouth into the hearts of the people. And it was constant over and over and over. He rehearsed his speeches in front of a mirror and he practiced his gestures for maximum of, of effect, including how, he, how his tone of voice had this authoritative, authoritative sound. And he would present these specific posturizations that made him look like he was an authority that people just couldn't resist. He projected himself as a leader so people would listen. And he understood the power of theater as a means to reach the people. He adored theater and the arts. He was, a, he was actually going into art school and wanted to be an artist, but didn't make it into the school. They said his art wasn't good enough, but he fully understood the power of art and the power of theater all the way growing up. And I didn't know that until I watched a couple of these movies and I'm like, oh, huh, I didn't ever thunk it. But again, notice the difference between Hitler is, is he felt that he personally was the answer. All right. How Hitler rose to power. There was a lot of inflation at the time. It had a devastating effect on the people and they were extremely desperate for change. The conditions at that time warranted an, a, a, it was ripe for an uprising. The working class was poor. They didn't have jobs. They, they literally, you know, we think that our situation right now is dire. It's nothing compared to what it was at the time of Hitler. There was a huge, the huge rapid inflation. It literally destroyed the German currency, which I did not necessarily know that either. He led a coup that failed. And everybody thought this is the end of Hitler, but Hitler turned the trial into a theatrical event where he presented himself as a patriot to the people and they felt sorry for him. And he, when this led to his patriotism, where he tricked the German people into believing that he was a martyr, that him going to jail was, that meant he was a martyr. And if you can get somebody to believe that you are a martyr for the cause, then the chances of them following you are going to be stronger. So how, how did he build his brand? Through discipline, order, and power. That was a simple message. Remember, he came from a military background. He was a soldier in World War I. He exaggerated the message to bring the people his proposed idea. He believed that he could bring Germany back to the glory from the dire circumstances of the 1920s. His rise to power, everybody was still reeling from the issues of World War I. And then he believed in a great chain of being, and this is what one of the documentaries said, as a belief that certain humans are at the top while others are at the bottom. So he's already trying to divide humans, saying, this group of people is matters more than this other group of people. We'll leave it at that because now we have words, this group matters more so than another group. So in a sense, we are repeating exactly Hitler's beliefs. 
he understood how propaganda worked and learned that repeating his message over and over and over and over was important. Keep it before the people's eyes, keep it before their ears, keep it everywhere so that it didn't matter where you went, you saw the message. And interestingly enough, he thought that words and symbols, if he could tie a specific word or a specific ideal to a symbol, then this moment that you looked at that symbol, then that promoted that idea. And, you know, we've seen that recently. Um, and I'll get into some of that as we go, as we go there. Now, here we enter the 2020s, the year of 2020, going into 2022. Again, we are seeing hyperinflation, which we are seeing as a recipe for financial collapse. You know, at this moment, we don't know where it's going to go. But if we don't learn from what happened to the in the 20s and the, the Great Depression, we could be there again. And I'm not saying that to be negative, but the whole point is, are we going to repeat history? What brought us to this point? Ooh, I did that one second. Okay, we will, will we learn from the past or will we repeat history? Okay, coercion, there's always a coercion to follow a certain protocol for medical treatments. <laughs> and I'm not talking necessarily about the one that arose in the 2020s. If we go back and look at Royal Raymond Reif, he actually had a cure for cancer, but it didn't involve using medicines, which brought a certain group of people more money. This was free treatment. So therefore, he was actually shut down by a certain group of people, which will remain nameless and basically deemed penniless. It is no different than most of the medical treatments that we have now, including what's come before us in the last two years, because they want us to follow a certain protocol for a, whatever the medical treatments are. And I'm not going to name anything because in 20 years from now, it's going to be a different story. Same scenario, but it will be a different disease or a different medical situation. So what happens is, is leaders are vying for a position to lead us out of Egypt and into some sort of a promised land that will solve our problems. So we are ripe right now in a situation for someone to take care of what is going on right now in the country or in the world for that matter. So as we find and, you know, we look at whatever it is that is uncomfortable for us, we want someone to make things comfortable again, but sometimes that is not the best thing. Now, here is the thing, and I, this will go back to the previous blog post in the previous video. Anything other than a specific narrative is canceled. That is where propaganda really steps in. Propaganda puts one idea, one ideology over all the others and promotes the one specific ideology. And then the media and whoever is part of the ideology, those are the only people that you're allowed to listen to. And as long as you stick to those ideas, you're good. But if you go outside, you're canceled. So, the, and this is how it's done through media, which is now we have social media. Back then, Hitler did it by blaring stuff over loudspeakers 24 7 <laughs> newspaper whatever he could to reach the people you know you turn on the radio now it's like every commercial there's something about the current medical emergency that they're telling you to do a specific thing so that you're not susceptible to a specific medical condition that is no different than what Hitler did. He put something on the radio, in the media, in the newspapers, slogans, signs. You know, they didn't have TV back then, but now we have TV, we have internet now. All of these things 
are used to present a specific idea that is before your face 24 seven. That my friends is propaganda. Oops, I'm missing the A. Pretend like you didn't see that. We'll skip past. Oh darn, we can't. Okay, so how do you recognize, how to recognize propaganda? It's fear-based ideals. You are required to do blank, fill in the blank, to get blank. Right now, you cannot travel to certain countries unless you do a specific thing then you get some piece of paper that says you've done that thing, which now then allows you to travel to that country. Okay, so like, well, if I don't do that, I'm not gonna be able to do blah. So there's an example. There's one specific solution that's continually forced while other options are entertained. Again, this is how do you recognize something as propaganda? Man, I wanna go add that A on the end of that. Ugh, that's the educator in me. So the other thing is, is who is financially backing the idea? If the people with the solution are benefiting from it, chances are it's all about money. Show me the money. Who's got the money? Do, 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 do. We can write a song about that. Now, does the integrity in the character of a leader of the leader's action match their words? So if this leader comes out and says, I'm going to do that, da, 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 and I've lived out that, da, 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 been there, done that, bought the t-shirt and wore it. So in other words, they've lived it, they've practiced it, and now they're going to show you how they've practiced it. So that's integrity and character. Character. They're walking out and they're showing you how to walk out what they've done. So if those actions in the words match, then that means they're in integrity and they're walking in integrity and character. But if they say one thing and do something else, we have a word for that. I'll let you fill in that blank. So people are treated poorly or ignored for having opposing ideals. Hmm, where have we seen that in society recently? All right, moving on. Who has the control? The people? Or the leader. I'll leave that one right there and let you ponder on it. I'll even take my little cursor and I'll say it again. Who has the control? The people or the leader? Okay. If an idea isn't rooted in freedom of choice, abundance for all those involved, integrity, community, unity, cooperation, and stewardship, it's probably propaganda. If it's promoting a certain uh, people group only and only particular people benefit from it, then it's propaganda. If it doesn't in help everybody involved at all levels of life, then it's not good. All right, can't wait to get past this slide because I can't stand the A not being on the end of the word propaganda. Whew. How do we stay away from propaganda? Propaganda has a negative resonant frequency because it's based on fear tactics, control, and power. If anything, oh great. Now it's a <laughs> That's called a cat party. <laughs> Hope you heard that. Um, propaganda has a negative resonant frequency because it's based on fear tactics, control, and power. I cannot say that enough. If you hear something and immediately fear rises within you, that's a check in your gut reaction that there's something wrong. There's something wrong in Ripper City. What we wanna do is look for a resonance of love, honor, hope, truth, integrity, unity, abundance, and personal responsibility as the barometer for any proposed idea. If somebody comes to you and proposes something from you, for you, and it, it's not wrapped in love, it's not wrapped in honor with everyone who's involved or hope or truth or freedom of choice to make, to, you know, make your own decision or bringing people into unity and has abundance for all that are involved and that requires some personal responsibility, then chances are 
we're going to buy into something that's involving propaganda. And I think I said this before, if there's a reasonable choice, then we're probably good. But if we're limited to choices that just don't feel right, that in your gut are not good, then it's propaganda. Or if you feel that someone should be punished because they're not doing da 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 so it's good for you to make a choice, but it's not good for them to make a choice, uh, yeah, we've got problems there. So we have to think about our heart attitude in this whole thing. If we think it's good for us or good for them, but it's not good for us, and we can't live ourselves in what we're proposing, then we have bought into some propaganda. I, I won't spend a whole lot of time going there. What we want to do is we want to look for leaders whose words and actions tell the same story. If a message is persistent and it's continually before you and you're being required to make a specific choice and only that choice, it's propaganda. And then what happens is, is the more we buy into the propaganda, the more we, we resonate with, with the negativity that comes from that, the more difficult it's going to be to pull away from it because we have practiced what it is that's before our eyes. We've rehearsed it. And the last thing I'm saying here is always choose love-based ideals over fear-based ideals. If we don't do that, we are toast. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. Now you get to see my face. Okay, the whole point in understanding what propaganda is and how we are living in 2022 with a variety of propaganda issues in front of us. I'm not going to point out what they are. It's it's up to each one of us to step up to the plate, look at every belief system that we have and say, where did that belief system come from? Is what I am resonating with, does it, is it covered in love? Is it laced in a position of rest? Is it laced with peace and joy and comfort? Does it benefit all of those that are involved or does it only benefit a particular group if it does not then we have subscribed to something that is unhealthy for us and is fear-based and will eventually take us down a road that we don't want to go not all hope is lost because then what we do as is we begin to resonate with love unconditional love which means we accept ideas that are not our own. We can still disagree with someone's ideas and still love them at the same time. I don't have to agree with everything my neighbors or my friends or my family say. Trust me, I have families who, family members who can have completely different ideology points than I do but I still honor them for being a person, for their, their humanness. And I get together with them and we talk about the things that I know that we can agree on. And we can agree to disagree. It is not our job to take someone that we disagree with and say, nanner, 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 you don't believe like I do you are canceled that's judging others making them feel less than and not treating them with honor and respect the more that we learn to honor and respect other people for their ideas and for the way they choose to live despite our own personal belief systems 
the more that we walk in love. I, even in my living through an abusive marriage, I never hated my husband. I knew that our creator loved him the same amount that he loved me. The difference is my choices were different than his. He chose to live out of negativity. I chose not to be the victim and instead to live out of love. That allowed me to not hate him. I also chose to forgive him for what he did. That freed me from the arrows of negativity that came my direction. It works the same way when we have various propaganda things sitting before us. If we choose not to participate <laughs> and then release the opposite frequencies of the negative things, and we begin to resonate at the stronger frequencies that override fear and frustration and anger and all of those things, even when this other junk is sitting there staring us in the face, hey, participate, participate, participate. You've got to participate in this. We don't have to. And I know that sounds difficult, but I do believe that there is a way out, but it will take action on our part in whatever we feel led to do. We have to be respectful of one another. We, if we, are, we cooperate, we stand in unity and come to that place where we can cooperate and where we can agree to disagree and function from a position of unconditional love, I think that our world will change. And I don't think all hope is lost. And I'm going to leave you with that today. And the last statement is, let us not participate with negative propaganda. May you be free.